I've mentioned spiritual deceptions and we can identify nine clear ones, which I think is helpful in really testing yourself against the word of God. And the first one would be religious deception. Uh, Colossians 2 verse 16 says, let no one judge you. Um, religious deceptions where you have the likes of fasting without godliness or forbidding people to marry. They declare people are holy and to keep man-made rules of righteousness. This is a religious deception. Then we have doctrinal deception. When people leave the simple meaning of God's word. Now, for example, they say you have to be baptised in water to be saved. But we have the, the very common example of the thief on the cross, whom Jesus said would be in paradise with him that day. And he hadn't been baptised in water in Christ's name. There's ethical deception. Now, this one is where a lot of people say, ouch, because it's when Christians profess the lordship of Christ, but they cheat and lie, say at work or in business, you know, even stealing that pencil from the office. There's moral deception. Now, the cornerstone of moral deception is secular humanism. And basically, if it feels good, do it. But Jesus says that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. There is a right way. Intellectual deception is when you believe that your opinions or your intellect are equal or even superior to the word of God. And that's quite hard for many of us to believe that there are people who actually think that way. There's fanatical deception. John writes about the time will come when somebody kills you and they think they're pleasing God. And we've seen examples in past ages, for example, the Crusaders, the Inquisition. We see other religions and cults who also think that just doing harm to you is pleasing God. There's sexual deception. This is a belief or a philosophy that rejects God's ordained monogamous sex relationship within marriage between a man and a woman. Very controversial today. Of course, there's mystical deception. This is becoming more and more prevalent as well, where people claim dreams and voices and visitations and angels. Now, we know biblically this certainly does happen, but it's become a, a, a cult. It has become a trend. And again, I have to remind us, you know, Satan can appear as an angel of light. Now, this kind of deception encourages you to look for the God or the goddess within. And again, like back in the Garden of Eden, the promise is you shall be as God. And it's a lie. It's a deception. So the ninth, I would say spiritual deception as such is it's when Christians become bored with the discipline of the word of God and they begin practices that are contrary to New Testament orthodoxy. For example, we are as gods. It's when God is in all, everything is God. God is a force, some kind of force rather than a personal God. And Christ is an office of man. That is the genesis of spiritual deception. 